Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you, you sound like it's a good morning, too. Good morning. I hope you out there feel the same way. Oh, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it's hot. The heat is on. <laughs> but, but it's our turn, huh? Yeah, and, uh, but, but you, know, uh, you know how I can tell that the heat is really on? I, I saw an ant swimming in my coffee. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm one who not, I, I don't waste coffee. So, 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 so I gulped him down too. <laughs> Now, so you, you, you know about the spider <laughs> you, you, you you looking at the Ant-Man now, okay. <clears throat> you gotta start giving tea. Yes. Oh, it's good for laughter, isn't it? Yeah. God gave us laughter, humor, as well as our tears. Oh, yes. And we've had a lot of tears in the past uh, two years, haven't we? Yes. A lot of losses. Uh, and uh, but but it's good that we are here uh, to uh, glorify God. I mean, if you can't do it, do it today, you just can't do it. Uh, it's so beautiful out there. Well, we want to start out our, uh, our, our day with the word. It is a beautiful word. Uh, I'm coming from the NIV, uh, Psalm 115. This is a, a, a uh, interesting uh, psalm. You're going to hear it uh, again, I'm sure. Uh, psalm 115. Not to us, O Lord, not uh, to us, but to your name be the glory. Because of your love and faithfulness. Why do the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. I, I noticed that uh, now that I'm the uh, uh, senior elder here, I do whatever I can please. <laughs> the fourth verse. But their idols are silver and gold made by the hands of men. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but they cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear. Noses but they cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel. Feet but they cannot walk. Nor can they utter a sound with their throats. I want to go back to the uh, uh, seventh verse. They have hands but cannot feel. Feet, but they cannot walk. You know, in our nation, we are experiencing the walking dead. Hmm? That, that, that uh, TV thing is uh, uh, so real. The eighth verse. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. O house of Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord. Small and great alike. May the Lord make you increase, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to man. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to silence. It is we who extol the Lord both now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. 
I, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Elder Julius Alexander Thomas I. <laughs> Julius Alexander Thomas III was born two months ago. Amen. Lord have mercy. <clears throat> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> God, we thank you. Oh, yes. We, we, we thank you for uh, laughter. We thank you for your sense of humor. You, 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 you've given us tears. But in the midst of it all, we, we, we can rejoice in you. We can glorify in you. Oh God, continue to teach us your ways. Sometimes we forget. Uh, but uh, you remind us we know better. Thank you for your word. Thank you for our praise team who is going to lift us up. Oh, they are so great. And later we will hear from God's word. One of God's servants, our pastor. Bless us now and make us a blessing. Uh, as we are blessed uh, this day. Bless us as we go forth from this place to glorify you. Uh, we, uh, bless someone with a smile, with laughter. Just, it, it doesn't take much. Hear our prayers, O oh God, incline your ear to us and grant us your peace, your love, your power, and your mercy. Amen. I can't do nothing if 
if I don't have you I need 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 you I love you I love you Lord I love you 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 I praise you I praise you I praise you Lord I praise you I praise you I praise you Lord I thank you I thank you I thank you Lord I thank you I thank you Lord I thank you I worship I worship I worship Lord I worship Lord I worship I worship adore you adore you adore you I adore you adore you adore you I praise 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 Lord I praise I praise you. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. Lord, I need you. I need you. I can't. I can't live. I can't breathe. I can't move without you. I can't go on, Jesus. This is my song, Jesus. I can't do nothing if I don't have you. I can't live. I can't live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Real simple. Let's just praise the Lord. He's done great things for me.
brought me a mighty long way. He has brought me a mighty long way. A mighty long way. He has taught me how to pray. This little light.
it back. I can't hold back. what the Lord has brought you through. I can't hold back. You can't hold it back. I can't hold back. I can't hold back his praise. I can't hold back. God's been good to me. I can't hold back. I can't hold it back. I can't hold back. I can't hold it back. I can't hold back. such that there are detours, <laughs> there are distractions, there are pitfalls. But in the midst of all of that, we can't hold back, can we? Because God is still who he is. He's still good. And as Elder JT read this morning from Psalm 115, you know, the last thing that's said in that psalm is hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And uh, I, I want to I share from that psalm this morning, um, Psalm 115, um, I was telling a couple of the deacons this morning, I, my intent was to go to Revelation chapter 2 and 3 and take a look at over the next few weeks um, the seven churches of Asia Minor. But I, I, when I read the Bible for my own edification during the week, I use a chronological Bible. So it, it looks at Bible passages in chronological order. And this week it was Psalm 114 through Psalm 116. But when I got to Psalm 115, Psalm 115 just stood out to me. It, it stood out to me because of what we looked at last week uh, from Acts chapter 17 when Paul saw all of those idols. And he was like, but you have a monument, you have a shrine to the unknown God. You've got all these idols here. And Paul said, I'm going to tell you about the one that you don't know about. Let me explain that. Let me explain him to you. But when you look at Psalm 115, you find that even though there are other gods, small g's, because they are out there. The psalmist here says that. Only the real God deserves glory. Amen. He deserves it. We live in a day and a time when people talk about what they deserve. All right. All right. I, I was watching a television program the other night and the psychiatrist was, was talking to his client and he says, I know what you want. and You, you, you want what you want. I know how you feel. You, you, you feel what you feel. He says, but there's one thing that's missing. You deserve this. <laughs> ah, I'm like, man, you know, we talked a little bit about the philosophy of the world last week. That's the world's philosophy that we deserve certain things. And sometimes we feel that we deserve glory and honor. It is given to whom it is given. The Bible tells us to do that, no doubt. But we can't walk around personally feeling that I deserve glory. And so this psalmist, uh, the author, we don't know who he is. We're not quite sure of the time frame in which this psalm was written. Um, it could be when they had returned from captivity. But the psalmist here, he admonishes Israel to renounce their small G's. If you remember, Israel had a history of doing what? 
knowing who Jehovah, who Yahweh was, recognizing him as their God, but yet they would commit spiritual adultery. They, they would go out and they would have God as their God. The choir just saying that, you are my God. <laughs> That's what he's just saying, right? But then you don't cheat on that which is yours. All right. All right. Not supposed to anyway. And so they were cheating on God. And so because of their cheating on God, God turned them over. He had them go into captivity. And so perhaps this psalm was written, written during that time of their captivity. And so the psalmist is saying that now that you've returned from captivity, you need to return to your God as well, the God of your forefathers, the God of your heritage. So many times we're dealing with our uh, kids. I, I know when my boys went to school, I was fortunate, fortunate they went to a Christian school. And then going to a Christian college, you know, there was a focus on God. But not every student goes to college and there's a focus on the true and living God. There's focus on other gods. And so our kids can be sidetracked because of what the world teaches them. And so here in this psalm, there's an invitation for Israel to wholeheartedly trust in the God that they know. The God, the God of their heritage, the God who has brought them, who is God indeed. And then we'll see here that there is a benediction of increase. So much is talking, it's talked about today about uh, what you deserve, as I said, but then how God is supposed to increase you. But there's only one way to get increase from God. <laughs> really, there is only one way to get increase from God, and that's to be obedient to him. Yeah, I mean, he's going to bless you with the everyday blessings. But if you want real increase, you need to obey God. Then finally, in this psalm, we will see that there's a declaration that they will, they should only give praise to Jehovah God. I want to use from this psalm four things I want to look at real quick. Y'all give me about 25 minutes, and if y'all believe that, I got some swamp land in Arizona for you. <laughs> give me about 30 minutes, and then maybe I'll sell you that swamp land in, in, in Carolina. Uh, we want to look at God is faithful. We want to look at idols are false. God's followers are to be faithful to him. And then there's a future blessing for being faithful. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. You are good to us. In the midst of everything that goes on, you are still good to us. We know that you are the only real God. The one who deserves all the glory. So as we look into your word today, remind us, infuse us with that truth. We pray in Jesus name. Amen. amen. And so in verse one of Psalm 115, this psalmist speaks about the faithfulness of God from verses one through three. But notice how it starts off. He says, not to us, Yahweh, not to us, but to your name. Give glory because of your faithful love, because of your truth. God is the only one who is worthy of honor. He's the only one worthy of majesty, of glory. Uh, the psalmist says that God's worthiness is, is based upon God's faithful love. God's faithful love. And this is the word in, in Hebrew, uh, hased. I can't say with all the inflections and the guttural tones, but oftentimes it, 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 it talks about goodness and God's kindness. It, it speaks to God's loyal love. God is faithful. He's faithful. He's loyal to us. How many of you know that God is really loyal? I mean, when you have done the worst thing that you can think of. I know one guy said he went into church one day and he was upset with God and sat in the church and cussed God out in the church. And yet he's still alive. You know, you, you want to know why he's still alive? Because God is faithful. He's merciful. He's he's kind. God knows what's going on on the inside of us. He knows our struggles. And he knows that he can fix it. <laughs> If we just turn ourselves over to him. 
I don't know what you've experienced, and perhaps this psalmist had been through some things himself, but he knew that God was always trustworthy, even when we have had diagnoses that things aren't right. When, when you look at your bank account and it's down to five dollars, y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, we, Sheila and I were driving to church this morning and saw the Shell station. That's generally where I get my gas because with my phone company, T-Mobile, every Tuesday I can get 10 cents off uh, every gallon of gas. And, and if I do it enough, then they give me another 5 cents off. It's 15 cents. But regular right now is 445. That's what, that's what the sign said on the way to church this morning. I don't care if gas gets the $9 a gallon. God is still faithful. He's still faithful. So I'm just have to go to Sam's Club now because God is, God's faithfulness is pointing me to Sam's Club. Because Sam's Club is cheaper. That's the faithfulness of God. There's, still, there, there's some gas that's out there that's cheaper. Y'all, 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 didn't, y'all don't even think about it in terms like that, do you? That's the faithfulness of God. The, 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 the nations around Israel ask this question, where is their God? If this psalm is written because Israel has now come back to their promised land, back to Jerusalem, back to their land, perhaps the nations that had captured them, the nations that were surrounding them, they were like, well, where is your God? Wait a minute. You you worshiping this God that that you say is Yahweh. And yet he had you in captivity for 70 years. That's God's faithfulness. Because God could have wiped them completely out. His loyal love says, I'm I'm going to chastise you. I'm going to correct you. I'm going to bring you back to me. And I'm going to bring you back to the promised land, the land that I blessed you in. These these nations could have been taunting Israel and making fun of them because what they, they failed to see was that Israel, what they saw was that Israel had an invisible God. All the other nations around them had these images. Remember Paul in in Athens? And he saw all those symbols, all those images. It's like, why are you worshiping a God that nobody can see? Y'all must be out of your mind. Where is your God? What they failed to understand, the nations failed to understand this. This is the way God wanted it. This is how he commanded it. This is what he told Israel. Go with me to Exodus chapter 20, starting at verse 3. And what we call the Ten Commandments, you find these commandments. Exodus 20, verse 3. Do not have other gods before me. That's the first thing. I am God. Don't have anything else. Don't have your car. Don't have your lawn. Don't have your spouse. Don't have your bank account. Don't have Buddha. Don't have Kama. I'm just, I'm just, you know, don't don't have any other gods before me. And now notice what he says with this second command starting in verse four. He says, do not make an idol for yourself. Some of us, we got these little candles in our houses. To bless our houses. And every time we burn the candle, we think we're going to get a blessing some of us, we, we, we have sage and we want to put sage all over. We got rocks. Do not make an idol for yourself. And God got very specific here, whether in the shape of anything in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. Don't, don't make an image. That's not me. I created those. anything that you see that you can imagine because of what you have seen. I created those things and that's not me. Verse five, you must not bow down to them or worship them. Devote yourself to them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a what? Jealous God. Jealous means that I'm protecting. I'm protective over what's mine. Yeah, people say, well, Stephan, you don't worry about your wife. No, I don't worry about my wife because I know Sheila. I'm not jealous of Sheila. I'm jealous over Sheila. Y'all heard me say before, when I worked in Norfolk Naval Shipyard, I didn't want her to work in the yard, not because I didn't trust her. Because I didn't want to go to jail. I knew she would be faithful. That was no problem. But I knew that there was some men in there that did not know how to take no for an answer. And I was going to help them understand a simple two-letter word, N-O. 
But it, but it might have resulted. George, you know what I'm talking about. It might have resulted in me going to jail. I'm jealous for her, over her. God is jealous for us and over us. He doesn't want us wandering off to something else that's not him because he's a faithful God. How do you know he's a faithful God? Finish out this verse. He says, I am a jealous God punishing the children for the father's sin to the third and fourth generations of those who what? Hate me. But I like verse six. But showing, here's our word, faithful love to a thousand generations of those who love me and do what? Keep my commandments. God is a faithful God. Uh, Israel believed in this invisible God because that's who God wanted them to believe in. He revealed himself to them. And he says, you should have no image. The other nations, uh, maybe they were wondering, they were wondering about the power of Yahweh since Israel had gotten defeated. Man, what, what's up with your God? He let y'all go into war and get defeated like that? He let you be taken away from your homeland for 70 years, your temple sitting fallow, your ground sitting fallow, your temple desecrated and desolate? What kind of God is that? That's the God who don't have to explain himself to anybody. <laughs> he's, he's always going to be in control. Other gods are unworthy of God's glory, and God is unwilling to share his glory with anyone, with anything, and, uh, uh, or anybody else, especially with idols, false gods. Isaiah 42, 8 says, I am Yahweh. That's my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. Since God isn't going to do it, we shouldn't do it. Verse 3 of Psalm 115, the psalmist goes on and he says, our God is in heaven and does whatever he pleases. <laughs> he does whatever he wants to do. If he wants the sun to turn dark for 15 minutes and still, don't, and still keep the, our world from freezing up, he, it pleases him. He does it without our a, a permission. We don't, he doesn't need our consent. Well, Stephan, let me, t let me ask you, let, let, let me ask you, here, here's, here's what I'm thinking about your life, and uh, tell me what your opinion, God don't want our opinion. He doesn't need our opinion. God resides in heaven. He resides in the sky, in, in, in its vastness. Remember when David was going to build a temple for the Lord, and Solomon actually did it, and then they dedicated the temple? Look with me in 1 Kings chapter 8. Verse 27, this question was asked, but will God indeed live on earth? Even heaven, the highest heaven, cannot contain you. <laughs> Much less this temple I have built. Solomon built this grand temple. He says, this temple, yeah, we have this here as a place for corporate worship, but this can't contain you. And in our mind, so many times, we reduce God to our limited thinking. He, we, he, we can't just lock God into one place. Heaven can't contain him. He's sovereign, is what the psalmist says. He does whatever he pleases. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. I thought about this verse as I was preparing this message. And I thought about the King James Version. The King James Version says he does everything after the counsel, counsel of his own will. But here in the home and Christian, it says, for we have also received an inheritance in him. You ever feel down and out? You feeling bad about yourself? You feeling like you don't matter? You feel unworthy? May I suggest to you, look at Ephesians chapter 1. As believers, we can, we can get down in the dump sometimes. But, but, but read Ephesians chapter 1 and, and then note the number of times where Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1, in him. He talks about us in him. And so when you feel like you're no good, just think about that God loves you in Christ Jesus. But here 
in verse 11, he says, we have received an inheritance in him, predestined to the purpose of the one who, watch this now, works out everything in agreement with the decision of his own will. God said, I consulted myself. <laughs> I did this on my own. I did not have to talk to anybody else to send my son Jesus to die on the cross to save you from your sins. I don't need to talk to anybody else that allow your car to have a blowout on the interstate and then the person that comes by that you talk to to help uh, uh, fix your tire, that person was in need of hearing the gospel. God said, I got it all worked out. Do we look at every in, in, everything that happens in our lives as a, as, as a moment, as an opportunity to share the God that we know? God is, yes, he's invisible. God is in control. He is sovereign, he, meaning he, he has control and he has ultimate authority. This, this, this author of this psalm, I think he, he was assured of God's existence, God's power, God's authority. Look in, psalm, in Isaiah 45, 18. And since God created everything, he's in control of it all. Psalm 45, 18, for this is what the Lord says. God is the creator of the heavens. He formed the earth and made it. He established it, established it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahweh and there is no other. I have not spoken in secret somewhere in a land of darkness. I did not say to the descendants of Jacob, Seek me in a wasteland. I, Yahweh, speak truthfully. I say what is right. God is faithful. God is true. And since God is a faithful God, then we need to recognize the fallacy of idols. <laughs> since God is true and God is alive, we need to understand the falsehood of an idol. An idol... The word idol can be defined as a pagan and material effigy that is worshipped as a representation or in lieu of a deity. Something that is an effigy, it is in place of or in represent, representation of a, a deity. Remember back in the 60s, those pictures that used to be in the houses? John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, and Jesus Christ. I'm like, yeah, 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 that was way, 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 way before some of y'all were born, way before some of y'all. Are, are, are we taking Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, and, and, and lowering him to the level of two creatures? Move on, move on, Joseph, move on. Some of us would have a fit if somebody were to come in our houses and that cross that we have in the house, if they move that cross from the sacred place that we put it, is it the cross? Or is it the one who died on the cross, was buried in the grave, rose from the grave, and has promised to come back again? Are we worshiping the relic? Well, move on, Joseph. The psalmist says in verse 4 here in Psalm 115, their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but cannot walk. They cannot make a sound with their throats. Those who make them are just like them, as are all who trust in them. <laughs> Idols are inept. They are dumb, blind, deaf, crippled, uh, and somic, which is in in capable of smelling. They have no way to smell. They are impotent. They can't help you. They can't help me. An idol cannot help. An idol needs to be carried somewhere. It can't even move itself. And an idol is ignorant. Has no knowledge. Isaiah 45 again, look at verses 20 through 25. 
Come, gather together and draw near you fugitives of nations. Those, here we are, who carry their wooden idols. You got to carry your idol. And pray to a God who cannot save. <laughs> Have no knowledge. Speak up and present your case. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who predicted this long ago? Who announced it from ancient times? Was it not I, Yahweh? God said, didn't I tell you you were going to do this? He says, well, understand this. There is no other God but me. Let me tell you about myself. I'm a righteous God and Savior. There is none except me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn. Truth has gone from my mouth, a word that will not be revoked. You can't take it back. When God said it, that's it. Whether I believe it or not. God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Every knee will what? Bow to me. Every tongue will swear allegiance. It will be said to me. He says, now, when, you, when that bowing and, and, and that kneeling goes on and, and that allegiance is being sworn, he says, it's going to be said to me, righteousness and strength is only in the Lord. All who are enraged against him will come to him and be put to shame. All the descendants of Israel will be justified and find glory through the Lord. Paul picked up on this. And Paul says, as you know, in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, for this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God and the Father. The psalmist says here in verse 8 of Psalm 115, he says these idols are false. They are dumb, blind, deaf. They can't, you know, they can't move themselves. But then in verse 8, he, he says those who make the idols and those who worship the idols, he says you just like them. <laughs> Those who have idols, it says, you are like them because you made it and also you trust in it. In, in, in essence, what he's saying here is this. The object of your worship dictates your moral center. What you worship tells you how you're going to live your life. And so if I have this idol, oh, great microphone. I feel like I want to go out and I want to kill somebody today. My idol is going to agree with me because I made it. But if I say, oh God, I, I, I'm hot. That man approached my wife the wrong way and I done told him 15 times, Lord, I, I done went past the seven. I went gone past the three. We up to 15 now. And so now I'm going to take matters in my own hands. And you know what God says to me? Thou shall not kill. You know what God says to me? One that is an overseer must not be a brawler. He must not be a pugilist. He must not beat up people. You know what God says to me? Not because he's a figment of my imagination, but because he's real and he's faithful and he's to be obeyed. He says, you know what? Turn the other cheek. God has already been 15 times. Your devices, your attitudes does not work out my will. I'm going to tell you what, living this Christian life ain't no easy thing, y'all. You know what the Lord says to me when I want to have my way? Die to self. Die to self. Take up your cross. <laughs> Follow me. God is holy, isn't it? 
And he's never going to point us to do that which is out of his character. My idol may let me go out here and do whatever I want to do. God, you see that girl over there, Lord? You, you see her? I know you do. God says this, be holy for I'm holy. Look with me in Leviticus chapter 11. Starting in verse 44. For I am Yahweh your God, so you must consec consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. Since he's the object of my worship, my devotion, then I should be holy like him. Just like those who have their idols are like their idols. We have the real God and we should be like him. You must not defile yourselves by any swarming creature that crawls on the ground. For I am Yahweh who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God. So you must be holy because I am holy. For Peter picked up on this theme and when he wrote to the church in 1 Peter chapter 1, he says, therefore, with your minds ready for action, ready for action, this is good action now, be serious and set your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Notice what he says in verse 14. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires of your former ignorance. When you didn't know the true God, when you didn't know the real God, don't be conformed to that. But as the one who called you is holy, you also are to be holy in church on Sunday mornings. Wednesday night doing prayer meeting. When you have chapel on the job. You be holding all your conduct. Well, it's only 15 more dollars and I can, you know what, Uncle Sam ain't going to know that if I write off this 15 more dollars, you know, and claim it as uh, a, a, a meal expense. It ain't, it ain't that big deal. It keeps me out of the next tax bracket. Just, just, just this 15 more dollars in all your conduct. Why? For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Who are we worshiping? Are we worshiping ourselves? Are we worshiping some philosophy? Are we worshiping some idea that comes out of our own imagination? I hope that we are worshiping the faithful God and we are rejecting false idols and so back in Psalm 115 look at verses 9 through 13 the psalmist says that those who are following God should also faithfully follow him if you're going to follow him if he's going to be your God then you, got, you, you can't be halfway in and halfway out you can't choose to worship God in this situation and not that situation you can't choose to worship God just on Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. Well, let me take Friday out because that's, that's the day that we normally do our mess. It's Friday night, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe Sunday, Monday, you know, and Wednesday. Listen to what the psalmist says in verse 9. Israel, trust in the Lord. With an exclamation point. Trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. House of Aaron. Trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help. He says, Israel as a nation, house of Aaron, house of Aaron could be representative of the priest because that's where the priesthood came from. Preachers, teachers of God's word, trust in the Lord. And everybody who fears the Lord, be confident in him, trust him. One of, the, one, of the, one of the components of this word trust here is being unsuspecting. Unsuspecting. 
If I trust Sheila, I don't, I'm not going around snooping on her. Y'all got what I'm saying? Yes, Baby, you say, you, you say you're going to the mall? Okay. I don't have a track on her phone to see if she was in the mall or not. I tr- I'm not suspecting anything. We might have to do that with our kids, because, you know, kids are lying to you. But this, she's an adult. She's my wife. I, if I can't trust her, why am I married to her? And since God can be trusted, we should not feel like that God is suspect. There are some people who feel that, you know what, I would trust God, but you know, I saw what he allowed in so-and-so's life. God is suspect. God, I I would give my whole heart to you. And how many of you have have ever thought this? You know, God, I, I I would give you my heart, my soul, my mind. But what if if I do that, what you gonna take away from me? That's not trust. I don't know how many of you sat down in the chair that you're sitting in right now, and when you sat down, you did this. You know, you tried to hold you. No, you just sat right down in the chair. You try, you had no suspicion. And we can trust the chair. <laughs> Move on, Stephanie. Being confident in the Lord. He is their help, he says. He's their strength. He's their might. A help is one who contributes to the fulfillment of a need or furtherance of an effort or purpose. This week, uh, my sister was moving and she needed some help. So I called one of the church brothers who has a truck and asked him if he would give her a hand. He said, sure. I said, now I got to be honest with you. She's got a piano in that house. <laughs> she got a piano in that, in, 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 in that apartment. And I said, look, I'm 63 years old. I, my, my moving days are over. I hope you got, I, I got help, Pastor. I, I got help. I went to my sister's uh, new location, and they were just pulling up with the truck. And when I got there, I had never seen a piano in that position, P. It's, 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 it's a spinet piano. It's, it's, it's a relatively small one, full 88 keys. But the bad boy was upside down. You ever seen, you ever seen roadkill? You ever seen a, 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 a possum in the street, and all fours are sitting straight up, and it's on his back? The piano was on its top, and the legs were looking up. I'm like, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> and I'm like, those two guys got that piano out of the apartment, down the three steps, into the truck. But now they got to get it two steps in the house. And I showed up at the wrong time. <laughs> But because they needed help, and they, and they were deciding how to do it, they were, they were needing help. I couldn't just stand by and do nothing. So I, I tried to help them with the furtherance of this need or effort, and I supported them. You know that when we are struggling in life, when we need God, He is our help. Since he's in control, since he's sovereign, and since he's faithful, and he's trustworthy, and he's true, he is our help. We can trust God, and we can rely on him, and not only that, he's our shield, he's our protection. A shield is there when you have a shield, it's there to block blows, or any other form of attack. God is there in front of us. He's there beside us. He's there behind us. He's above us. He's our shield. And anything that comes through is because he knows it is for our good. If I'm going to trust him, I'm going to trust him. God, I would give this thousand dollars, but I don't know what they're doing with it. But the Lord told you to do it. Move on, Stephen. Move on. Finally, verses 14 through 18. The psalmist 
gives a benediction. He, he prays a blessing upon faithful followers of God. He says in verse 14, may the Lord add to your numbers, both yours and your children's. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the human race. Verse 17, it is not, to the, it is not the dead who praise the Lord, nor any of those descending into the silence of death. In the Hebrew mind, it's like once you are dead, you are out of here. There's, there's, there, there's, there's nothing else. You can't praise God from the grave is what he's saying. Verse 18 starts with a but. Dead folk can't do it in his mind. He says, but <laughs> we will praise the Lord. When? Both now and forever. I'm going to praise the Lord. And then he closes out with that word, hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, saw, I saw you, Sister Cheryl, when the, when the choir was singing this morning. Yeah. And you, you got to think about how good God is to you. And, and, and you were not going to allow the moment to pass you by because I'm going to praise him now. I saw y'all when, when they were singing. You had your hands up. You were clapping your hands. You were giving God glory and honor. You were giving him the praise. Don't stop doing it. Even when the diagnosis is not what you want to hear. How many of you seen that commercial on TV where it says, when, when, when you hear the word cancer, it, says, it stops you in your tracks. But there's somebody in this room, more than one in this room, who's heard that diagnosis and yeah, they got stopped in the tracks. Ah! But they say, I don't know, God is too faithful to me. He's proven his faithfulness. And so I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. We're going to let the doctors do what the doctors do. But I'm going to trust, I'm going to put my confidence in God. He is the one who is my help. He's the one who comes alongside and bears me up. And nothing that he does not want to touch me can't get through his shield. If it comes through, he's allowed it. Now I'm going to praise him. Anyhow, Father, we thank you that you are the only real God. And we give you all glory and honor because you are worthy. Even when life is hard, even, Lord, when we don't have the answers, even when we don't know what the next step will be, help us, Lord, not to be suspecting of you, suspicious of you, but rather to trust you and who you are and all that you do. We pray this in Jesus' name. And that God's people say, Amen. 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 Praise team is coming back. I don't know what y'all fitting to sing, but y'all gonna sing some. Not 
for victories won But oh Lord, just for who you are To you we give the glory To you we give the honor To you we give the glory and the praise Not for what you've done Not for victory won But oh Lord Just for who you are To you we give the glory to you we give the honor, to you we give the glory and the praise, not for what you've done, not for victories won, but oh Lord, just for who to you we give the glory To you we give the honor To you we give the glory and the praise Not for what you've done Yeah. 